Hello there, wonderful people of the interwebs. I am, uh, I'm out in the woods today on this beautiful early November day, and I am going to be cooking one of my favorite things to eat, favorite things of all time. Um, but I'm doing it in a unique way for the very first time for myself. So what I love is Chinese barbecue pork. Now, this is something that they call char shu or char siu. Um, and it's on a lot of menus in Chinese restaurants. You can also see it when you go to the Chinese markets. It's like a barbecued red chunk of meat that's usually hanging. Um, and it's sweet, it's savory, it's salty. And I'm doing it for the very first time with some bear meat. So stick around, we're gonna cook that over the fire and we'll get to enjoy this char shu bear for the first time. So there's a few things that give char shu that signature flavor and a lot of it comes from five spice and hoisin sauce. So what I actually did is I took a bare um, sirloin, which is from the back leg, and that's an amazing cut of meat. You can use it for steaks, you can make sausages out of it, all kinds of stuff. But I like to use it as a whole muscle piece where I cook it over the fire and just cut it and eat it. Um, keep it more on the juicy side. I don't like to overcook my bear meat and with this, I just cut it into four strips. Now you still want to leave it kind of chunky, but you want to cut it smaller so that you get the marinade all around it. So this is just a marinated meat, leave it in the fridge overnight. You can do it in a couple hours if you felt like it. Um, but it's this sweet, salty coating that goes on the outside. And I just added some white sugar, some salt, five spice, pepper. You can use white pepper or grounded ground black pepper, sesame oil, rice wine, soy sauce, hoisin sauce, honey for a little more sweetness. I added a little bit of hot water as well to help everything come together. There are a few cloves of a really finely chopped garlic and classically this stuff is colored red. So you can add a few different things that make it red. I just used a food base red food coloring and it gives it that kind of color that you get when you smoke some meat, um, but it's just something that's traditionally done. So I've added that in there as well. Tossed it all into a bag with the meat and threw it in the refrigerator, turning it around every couple hours. And now we've got this beautiful marinated bear meat. All right, so to cook this bear meat, I'm going to use this new Rome grill that I have. So this is probably my new favorite way to cook food uh, outside. I can take this grill at flat packs and I can kind of take it anywhere. It doesn't weigh very much. It's uh, it's made out of laser cut aluminum. It's got legs. I'll show you how it all goes together, but it flats pack, it's super light and uh, easy to carry around. So you can build a fire inside this box and I'll show you some of the cool features that it has, um, but it allows you to cook over a grill pretty well anywhere and it elevates it off the ground so you don't have to worry about f starting a fire on the ground or gathering rocks or logs in order to build a fire. Um, the cool thing as well is you don't have to find a way to balance a pan on top of anything or find a grill. You can just cook right on top of it. So I'll show you how easily it goes together and then we can get into building a fire. So you just start with one of the sides and a back piece. Slide it into the notches, put the bottom in. Grab our front. side so now that the box is done we just grab our light little legs they fit into holes on the side And there you have it. 
Once that's all together, add the grill on top. And there it is, super easy. Now the cool thing about this is that you can access the fire from the front. Um, so you're not having to remove the grill, light the fire underneath the pan or whatever you're cooking. You can get heat directly under your food in a pretty simple way. And the other thing that's great is that it's just, it's flat. It's a flat surface to cook on. It's, it gives you a full grill top as well. This is a cast grill top. So when you're cooking outside, I mean, it's kind of nice to make shift a few things, but, um, when you want to do things more efficiently, you want a nice flat surface to rest something on and a grill is one of the best ways to cook. Um, and you're not dealing with gas or anything. You're dealing with straight wood fire. So I can easily go out and gather some wood here, but I have a bag of charcoal with me and starting charcoal in here is also super easy. So I'm going to load this thing up with charcoal, get a really nice base of coals going, and then we'll be ready to cook our bear meat. Yeah, yeah. There ain't no question. Ain't about paper, then you're being redirected. You ain't get the memo, you need to read the message. I stay saucy, finna run a boss. Dippin' like a boss. Haters get a ball. We can be stuck. I don't do it often. Boy, I'm sick. Excuse my coughing. Truck in the front of the porch. Ball for the horse. Ballin'. All right, so I've got a good bed of coals going on here, and I've got pretty much just the heat that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a nice, even heat. It's pretty hot. I can only hold my hand over there for a couple seconds before it gets way too uncomfortable. And that's the heat I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a super hot flame. I'm just looking for a nice consistent heat. And I've got some smoke going on here too. And that smoke is going to help flavor the meat as it cooks. Now, while I'm cooking it, I'm also gonna make sure that I'm turning it. I want to get some char on there. That adds a lot of really great flavor as well. And cooking over wood, you get that beautiful char flavor. Um, so we're gonna cook it like that leave it on for a number of minutes. I want to bring it to an internal temperature of around 145, 150. That will allow a lot of the blood to still stay in the meat and I'm not going to overcook it. So I want this to be nice and juicy. Once it comes off the heat, we'll take it off. We'll let it rest for a few minutes and we'll enjoy it with some white rice and some baby bok choy that'll also cook on the grill. And there it is, just a beautiful piece of marinated bare sirloin cut into a few strips about this size and that's the size that you want for this recipe. The marinade is going to be in there really well. It's coated. It's had about 24 hours in the refrigerator to really penetrate and that's going on the heat right now. So something you want to do with this meat while it's cooking is that you've got all of that extra marinade that's left in the bag or the container that you marinated in and you want to be able to baste that on top to develop this sort of candied caramelized coating on the outside of it with all of that flavor. So while this cooks away, uh, I didn't have anything to brush it with so all around there's a bunch of this grass. So I'm going to take this grass, bend it over, tie a little knot in it and make a little bit of a brush that I can use to dab that juice out of the bag and use that to base the meat. So here's how you wanna work with this. I'll grab a couple strands and put them aside. I'll use that to tie things up a little bit and I will fold this over nice and tight. Get rid of anything that's sort of just hanging on the outside. Go about, I don't know, two inches up. Wrap some grass around there nice and tight. Tie a knot in it. You're essentially just making a little broom. So that's on there. Now all of these pieces that are bent over, I'm just gonna get my pocket knife in between Make sure that they're all cut a similar length. Mess them up a little bit. And now I've just got this makeshift brush that I can use to dip in my marinade and brush it on the meat.
All right, that piece of meat is done. All right, so this has had a couple minutes to rest. Let's take, oh man, <laughs> the sauce coming off, this looks amazing. And the smell coming off of this meat is just unbelievable. It has a super strong five spice aroma, that hoisin sauce you can smell. It is just beautiful. So let's cut into this. Oh my gosh. Look at that beautiful chunk of meat. Look at that, nice and juicy inside. That red color on the outside just looks amazing. Let's slice this up and plate it. All right, so here we go. We've got some beautiful rice. Lay down our char siu bear. Mop up some of those sauces before we get it on there. This smells unreal. Got our baby bok choy. I really, really love, one of my favorite condiments is a little bit of kimchi. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot. You can never have too much kimchi. And what kimchi is, it's just a fermented version of, similar to our bok choy like we have here. And there it is. All right, so you saw how this all went together. You saw how I marinated the meat, you watched me cook it, and now I'm gonna force you guys to watch me eat this. Just wanna make sure that I get a little bit of everything in each bite here. A little bit of the bear, some rice on top, some kimchi. It's unbelievable. So the flavors obviously are just the same as getting a barbecued pork from the store or from a restaurant. But this char siu bear is pretty ridiculous. Well, my butt's wet. Great. So as I enjoy this amazing food, I just wanna say that my history with bears and bear meat and bear hunting isn't super extensive. I haven't been a bear hunter for a super long time. I actually used to be a fairly vocal anti-bear hunter because I did not agree with the methods that people went about acquiring bears, harvesting bears. But my mind completely changed when I tried bear meat cooked properly. And as somebody who loves wild, organic, hormone-free, just great food and love knowing where my food comes from, bears are an amazing resource. And some of the issues that we run into when we're eating wild game are that we don't like the taste. Um, I've heard a lot of things about bear meat, that it's greasy, uh, it smells bad, it tastes funny, it's gamey. All wild meat is going to taste different than chicken or beef that you buy at the store. Those are kind of your standard vanilla flavor profiles when it comes to meat. And we are eating a lot of farm-raised food. So you get something wild, yes, it's going to have a different texture to it. It's a wild animal, it's out there running around, it's not a lazy animal. Its muscle fibers are tight. This is an athlete that is trying to survive in the wilderness every single day. And everything about that animal is completely different than store-bought meat. So if we stop relating wild meats to store-bought meat, we're already in a really good spot. And the other big factor is cooking the meat properly. So bear meat and wild game in general, a lot of people who I've spoken with who don't like wild game, don't prefer it, have had a bad experience with it and more than likely your uncle larry who's a hunter who isn't a cook and doesn't know how to cook food properly loves the way that he does it but he shared it with you and maybe he overcooked it maybe he did the old classic you know couple pounds of random venison meat in a slow cooker with a can of mushroom soup he probably loves it it's not that appealing to somebody who has a different palate so i would encourage you to seek out wild game try cooking it 
properly. None of it really needs to be overcooked. There's different cuts of meat that you can technically overcook, slow cook in an oven, they break down, they're silky, they're smooth, they're amazing. This type of meat should be enjoyed cooked quickly, marinating it and adding all those flavors. You saw how simple that was, a few ingredients. They're a little different than your standard, you know, white vinegar and olive oil that you have on the shelf at home. Go out, experiment, eat more of your wild game in a way that you really enjoy it, in a way that you can share it with more people, share it with your family, get your family involved. And uh, this is the most healthy thing that you can be feeding them. Um, anyhow, enough about that. If you like what you saw, if you like this recipe, give it a try. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on what I just shared. I'd love to hear your comments. And uh, let me know if there's anything else you wanna see me cook. I cook all the time and I wanna be able to make some more videos for you guys. Uh, just to understand my thoughts a little better on the food that I make and how I really love and enjoy wild game and wild foods in general. So leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I hope you can get to better know your food in between now and the next time we see each other. Thanks again. There ain't no question. Ain't about paper, then you're being redirected. You ain't get the memo, you need to read the message. I stay saucy, finna run a boss. Dripping like a boss. Haters get a ball. We can be stunned. I don't do it often. Boy, I'm sick. Excuse my coughing. Truck in the front of the pool.